Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Are you feeling charitable? Then smash the subscribe button and the like button. And please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Man. And welcome to the DCEU Extra. It's been a very, very hard week at DC Comics. And for fans of DC Comics, the books, the graphic novels, as AT&T have made the biggest shift change in the comic books company in the industry ever seen. And it's really like AT&T standing up and saying, do you know what? Comics haven't made money for 20 bloody years, neither DC Comics or Marvel Comics. And do you know what? We're going to transform this company to actually make money and still entertain the reader. This is ambitious, and I kind of have the suspicion if all their plans don't work and they can't make any money from comic books, they would shut down the whole division, and that would be controversial. And what I'm going to say is very controversial as well. They are a business. They are a company. Go figure, eh? They actually want to make money out of the comic book industry. Um, but Jim Lee has been talking... Uh, to one of the best, one of the best journalists in in the business and um, over at The Hollywood Reporter. And um, DC's Jim Lee on the company's future. We are still in the business of publishing comics. And um, so this, I've read this article already and it's really, really good. There is no pencils down notice, says the exec. who weighs in on this week's Major layoffs, digital comics, interim editor in chiefs, and a new Batman book from John Ridley. Jim Lee, the superstar artist from the 1990s who rose through the executive ranks of DC to reach the top runs of the company, has had better weeks. Monday, Warner Media en enacted deep and painful company wide layoffs. DC, the home of heroes such as Batman and Wonder Woman. Hang on, where's Superman? That was weird, wasn't it? Batman and Wonder Woman. Anyway, saw the skiff cut 20% of its staff with many senior editors let go and a, 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 a reorganization implemented that sent shockwaves through not just the company, but through the comic and the DC fan community. This week has been really heavy, difficult time, not just for me, but for the entire organization. Lee tells The Hollywood Reporter via a Zoom call. We said goodbye to people that have been huge contributors and who have helped define and make DC what it is today. But by the way, they've let go some, of some very top earners that probably were pointless positions that they had to let go. They're not just downsizing to tighten their belts. They're trying to make this a profit-making organization. And that's hard for comic book fans to hear that, but that's the truth. As soon as the last news hit Monday, the rumours soon began in earnest. AT&T, which acquired Time Warner in 2018 to form Warner Media, wants out of the comic business. Other rumours suggested DC will no longer put out comics and um, that Lee would be demoted from his role as publisher and chief creative officer. The Hollywood Reporter brought these rumours and more to Lee, who outlined what he could do with the reorganization that will take the next two or three months to play out and while the team is still putting on the finishing touches on fandom warner media's blockbuster fan event set for august the 22nd we are still in the business of publishing comics lee adds saying that there is no work being halted yes there will be more batman john ridley who won an oscar for penning 12 years a slave is writing a batman miniseries wow an oscar winning writer that's pretty awesome right it will have a huge impact on the rest of the line, Lee says. And there will also be the return of Milestone, a label that features underrepresented heroes and creators. That's a really good initiative as well, by the way. Lee takes on the fate of DC Universe, changes to the publishing line and the seismic shift the company made amid COVID-19 to break from Diamond Comic distributors. So instead of, um, instead of um, Lee actually having um, Jim Lee having lesser responsibilities and getting a demotion. It looks like it's all on him now. It's a massive responsibility. It really is. Is DC still publishing comics? Absolutely, 100%. It is still the cornerstone of everything that we do. The need for storytelling, update, updating the mythology is vital to what we do. The organization leans on us to share and establish the meaningful elements 
of the content that they need to use and incorporate for all their adaptions. When we think about reaching a global audiences, we see comics as helping drive that awareness and that international brand. It's very much part of our future. That said, we will be reducing the size of the slate but it's about looking at everything and looking at the bottom 20%, 25% of the line that wasn't breaking even or was losing money. It's about punch for the pound, so to speak, and increasing the margins of the books that we are doing. It was about aligning the books to the franchise and brand content we've developed and making sure that every book we put out, we put out for a reason. Yeah, that's pretty much blatant, isn't it? They weren't making money on certain books, so they want to make money. That's it. And these, this is why these decisions are being made. And that is understandable. You now have two interim editors in chief, Mary Javins, who headed digital strategy, and Michelle Wells, who headed the YAR imprint. How is that going to work? We thought it would be great pairing to bring them together to help draft and organise the content we're doing. Along these lines, across digital, across global, we want to make sure we have diversity and inclusivity and making it in a way that we have authenticity to the storytelling that we're doing. It's really about consolidating all our efforts and having every editor involved in all these directives, and also organising, broadly speaking, in content that is for kids 6 to 11 and then 12 to 45. It's about consolidating format and oversight to a smaller, more concentrated editorial group. Yet, yeah, because basically they know comic books are not making much money, so basically they have to reduce who's making, who's getting paid there, but still making DC Comics a place that's great, right, with great books, but where they can make a profit out of it. Do you still have the title of publisher? Yes. Does your job change at all? I have more responsibilities and more expectations than ever before. In conversation with Warner Media CEO Jason Killart and Warner Brothers CEO Ann Sarnoff and my boss, Warner Brothers Global Brands and Experiences President Pam Lifford, they have some very ambitious goals for DC and I'm excited to be part of that. In that respect, there is more on our plate than ever before. I will continue to be involved as intimately with publishing as I have from the get-go. Focus on the creative content, the content strategy, how many books we should be publishing, the formats. We are bringing in a general manager to, to the organisation. I think that's a good idea. My role, the way it was envisioned 10 years ago, was that I would always have a partner that would focus on the operational side. The general manager we're bringing in has a wealth of marketing experience, global partnership experience, and general business development experience. That person will start in September. Yeah, this general manager basically is there to change the way they do things so they can actually make a profit. It's, look, personally, I think it's the right move. It's very exciting. And AT&T, as I say, seem to be very ambitious. They want to make money at the end of the day. You keep, you can keep on throwing direct TV. You know, you can, you can, look, I can look at you and say, what about when Disney did this or that in the 90s? or 95 or 98, doesn't make them a bad company now, right? So at the end of the day, you can keep on throwing that at me. But to me, what I see from AT&T ever since they've taken over um, Time Warner and, you know, redistributed it as Warner Media, they seem to be a very ambitious company making, making some great decisions. Do the layoffs or reorganisation mean that planned comics are still happening? Are the comics that would have been announced at fandom still happening? There is no pencils down notice. Everyone has been notified to keep working on all the projects that we've already greenlit and started. To that extent, there is no change. DC in the spring broke away from Diamond as its distributor and signed with two new companies. Some people said at the time it would be a mistake. How has it fared? Not only has it exceeded our initial expectations, but the size and strength of the business is that the same level or higher than pre-COVID. There was a lot of fear mongering out there about another, another hero's world top of debacle that occurred decades ago. There is nothing further from the truth. Things have transitioned very smoothly. That's not to say there aren't kinks that need to be worked out. UCS and Lunar, they've done an amazing job transitioning all the content we produce and putting it into new pipelines and getting it to retailers. We've gotten some tremendous numbers on some of, of recent books. We're back to, 
back to press on the Joker War storyline that has been running in Batman. Multiple printings on that. In fact, every issue since its launch has gone up in numbers. You know, you know how hard that is. Usually when you launch, you start big and the numbers go down. But here it is, climbing issue to issue. We've got our numbers for the free Jokers and first issue sold over 300,000 copies. That's an $8 book. That's gigantic. That's a gigantic number for having new distribution. It does. It it does sound like uh, it. It really is working out for them. And again, you know, these numbers are not made up. He's speaking the truth. He wouldn't come and lie. What he's doing is he's coming out to settle people's nerves down. I trust Jim Lee. I think he's the right man to run the entire of DC Comics. He certainly knows what he's doing. But you know, AT and T and Sarnoff, you know, they're putting pressure on this man to do what they want because they have a vision for the whole enterprise, which is Warner Media, and all their IPs are going to go through this. It's not just DC, it's everything, because they they want to be the number one entertainment mogul. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's good. This wasn't about taking our distribution business and placing it in the hands of two entities. It was about what can we do together to do things that were never con contemplated before, things that we would love to do to grow the physical market. One rumour I heard this week is that DC is going to only sell trades and o OGNs and make a deal with Marvel for them to publish DC Comics. Jim Lee laughs. This is nothing further from the truth in now. I don't know where you would even co connect those dots. Why would we ever do that? What about the rumour that AT&T hates comics and wants to get out of the comics business? I don't think they want to stop us from publishing comics. Comics serve a lot of different purposes. One of them is it's a great way to incubate ideas in creating the next great franchises. We want to continue that. Why would you want to stop that? Why would you want to stop creating great content that could be used across the greater enterprise? What is going to happen to DC Universe? Now, this is an interesting one, isn't it? And this is something we all want to know. The original content that is on DCU is migrating to HBO Max. So that's everything, right? So basically... Everything that they did on DC Universe will be on HBO Max. This makes sense. It isn't a commentary on DC Universe. They want everything on HBO Max because they want this to be the biggest club. Yeah, the biggest club, right, like Negan's got in The Walking Dead, so they can smash Disney to pieces. It's going to take time, but their plans are right, and they make absolute business sense. The original content that is on DCU is migrating to HBO Max. Truthfully, that's the best platform for, the, for that content. The amount of content you get, not just DC, but generally from Warner Media, is huge. And it's the best value proposition. If I'm allowed to use that marketing term, we feel that is the place for that. In regards to, that, to the community and experience that DC Universe created and all the black, uh, backlist content, something like turned 20,000 to 25,000 different titles and the way it connected with fans 24-7, there is always going to be a need for that. So we're excited to transform it and we'll have more news on that, on what that will look like. It's definitely not going away. I repeat, it's not going away. So I also feel that all that's going to have a department on HBO Max. It just makes them bigger. And when you look at Disney Plus and when you look at the fact that Disney own Marvel, their plans, what are their, why haven't they got, why haven't, why didn't they do a, D, a DC Universe with, because it was, DC Universe was a great idea, and as Jim says, it's not going anywhere, anywhere, it's just going to change where it is, HBO Max, which makes HBO Max the ultimate platform. What is the future of DC Direct? When we started, we were one of the first companies, is it not, First companies, if not the first, to go out and create a business that catered to that special speci speciality market. That success has brought in a lot of competitors and a lot of companies that are now in that space. So it's about evolving the model. We want to produce those collectible and serve those fans, but we will probably shift to a higher price point collectible and more of a licensing model, working with manufacturers we already work with. From a consumer point of view, there will be not be a change or drop-off in the quality of the work that they are seeing. Behind the scenes, how we create it and how we get it to them is going to change. We still have our principal lead of DC Direct, Jim Fletcher, with the company. He will be showcased in a fun panel with Jay Scott Campbell at Fandom 
which is brilliant news. Where do you see DC in two years? You'll definitely see more international content. You're going to see more digital content. And when you talk about growing our business, both physical and digital, to me, the opportunities are global. That's what we'll be focusing on. Sometimes that takes the form of content that we take here and translate and sell in other marketplaces. But we want to partner with creators in various territories and un unlock stories that feel authentic to their marketplaces with characters that they can embrace as their own. That's a great idea. And look for opportunities to take those characters and see them throughout all our mythology. With digital, that's more of a, wi uh, a windowing issue, meaning we'll go out there with digital content and the stuff that performs well in digital also performs well in print. A good example of that is Injustice, the digital comics that tied into the video game. When that came out, it was the best-selling digital comic of the year. It outsold Batman and brought a lot, a lot of adjacent fans into our business. And then we took that content and reprinted it in physical form. We sold hundreds of thousands of units. It was as big of a hit in physical as in digital. And that's the key here. They want to do both. And that is ambitious. And that is a great move. We're using that as a model as we go out to do more digital content. We'll take the most successful books and repackage it as physical books. I think there is definitely business to be had in physical periodicals. But that said, I think there's greater upside in digital because we can go to more global audiences and barrier to entry, especially in this pandemic, is lower. It's a lot easier to get digital content into the hands of consumers that want to read stories. We want to lean into that and think thoughtfully what digital content should be, what it should look like, the format. Wow, that was brilliant. That was a brilliant interview. So... If you can make heads or tails of my reading, which is bloody awful, uh, if I do say so myself, but I think I did better than I normally do. Um, I think what Jim Lee, Jim Lee gave details. Jim Lee didn't just come out and say, yes, everything's all right. Don't worry while we watched all, all, the, all of DC, you know, you know, Superman having a kryptonite arrow in his heart and Batman getting beaten up and, you know, and everything exploding in Gotham City. No. Jim Lee gave a very profound detail of what AT&T wants to do with DC Comics as a brand. And I don't know about you, and you can comment down below and let me know. I can't see anything wrong with what they're doing. AT&T wants to corner the market in everything they do. And I think this is right, because I think the comic book industry has been run like a charity for too long. This is a serious company. They bought Warner, Time Warner, for a reason, right? And you can keep on throwing things at me and saying they're amateurs, they're this and that. They're not. They are a multi-trillion dollar concern, and they're not dumb. I believe their plans and their ambitions for DC are pure. Of course, they want to make money, but they, they, they understand. They are very customer-focused. Make no doubt about that. They want to give us what we want because they know if they give us what we want to read and watch and everything else, they're going to make money. But they're, 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 what the strategy is with DC Comics is, look, we can't run this company the way it is because 40 years ago, comic books were one of the number one forms of entertainment. They're not anymore. It's not... Look, we have to take our heads out of our backsides. Oh, AT&T hate comics. No, because we sound stupid when we say that. It's just a case of making it a profit-making concern. Do I believe this can work? I, I love their plans. I think their plans are extremely exciting, and it just makes me really excited for fandom. What I will say is I'm very sorry for the people who have lost their jobs. I do feel that people who have lost their jobs at DC are people who won't be going hungry. And at the end of the day, some will call this a really, really bad week for DC Comics. I actually call this the rebirth of DC Comics. Ironic when I use the word rebirth, because we know they've done rebirth, right? But I do believe this week, and I, this week will be in the history of not just DC Comics, 
but comics. I believe everyone is going to follow AT&T with what they're doing with DC, especially Marvel, because I don't think Disney have done very much with the Marvel Comics brand since they bought bought Marvel. I don't think they've done anything that interesting. I don't think they've revolutionized the comics. And this is what I like about AT&T. They're not ignoring the comic book brand. And I think it's, it's as Jim Lee says, the comics are so important, not just for us, the fans to read, but it's the place where the people who make the films and the TV shows come. They talk to the people at DC Comics because they're the ones who know these characters the best, apart from the fans. So you can't knock down the comic book industry. There's money to be made. It's important. It's important it stays standing. But AT&T are absolutely spot on that it needed restructuring. I mean, I might get a lot of hate for this, but this is what I believe. And I think the future is bright under Warner Media and AT&T. And as these plans coming to fruition, I do believe that Disney are going to be looking over their shoulders. And right now, you see Disney are the company that can throw you a bone and you just go for it. But what, what um, AT&T are, are attempting to do here is create foundations. Disney don't actually have foundations. They're successful now. They're fashionable now. But in 20 years' time, where will Disney be? And where will HBO Max be? Where will the DC Comics brand be? I believe a lot higher than Disney and Marvel. And you have got this video as a receipt. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow with me more DC content. See you again soon.